Well, I'm so glad that you've joined me today. And uh, we are going to have an awesome, awesome program. While you are coming in, just go ahead and tag somebody and share this video with somebody, especially if you want their lives to be changed and if you intend for them to keep on living. I'm gonna have you to sit up here. If you intend to have them to keep on living, so welcome, welcome to a brand new life in Christ Jesus. That's what that means for real, a brand new life in Christ Jesus. And so we have a few people in um, our little studio audience today. And just a reminder, um, already the first two days are sold out and people are already going all the way to March, booking their reservations to be a part of the live audience. And this live audience will also go up on national television. So make your reservations, it's absolutely free. You can come, sit it up here, Antoinette, sit it up here. Sit this up here. You can make your reservation, thank you, thank you. You can make your reservations and um, book your seat. It's only 25 people that uh, are allowed to sit in the bookstore space that we have cut out. And so we want you all to be a part of that. Um, like I said, they're already into March. So if you intend to be a part of the studio audience, please visit us at um, JuanitaBonham.com or you can visit us directly at uh, a new website that we have put up, but it's going to be at um, at 3 with me, VIP, uh, eventbrite.com. That's what it is, eventbrite.com. And so you can make your reservation. Thank you so much. My producer just came and told me here to say, at three, A-T, three, with me. A-T, three, with me, dot, eventbrite, dot com. And book your reservation for you to become a part of our audience um, coming up. And it's every Monday and Tuesday we will be taping live here from the bookstore. And we will be taping live on Facebook. And those that are uh, a part of the studio audience, you will be in here as we have some people in here today. And uh, just giving us a little test run to make sure that we are doing it in the way that um, is going to bless the people of God. Well, if you notice there, I posted um, a diagram that we are going to go by today. Posted a diagram that we are going to move by today. Because once again, you're going to keep on seeing this picture right here, that this is what God wants. He wants your life to be balanced. And so I'm going to keep on showing you that. That's going to be a staple, a staple image. A staple image. You're never going to get that image out of your head. And so we're moving to this diagram because I am passionate about what I do. And if you want to know why, look at the video underneath and you will know why. Because I can't even keep showing those pictures um, of my surgery, it, 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 it really tears me to pieces, it does. Um, so, here we are, with this diagram, I thought I had it, and I don't see it, so I guess he's going to bring it to me. I have the one on variable, I don't have that diagram, I don't have that diagram. Well, we're waiting for him to come and bring that diagram to me because I have to follow that. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I need my glasses here now. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, and I want to go there because we're talking about your life being balanced. Second Timothy 1 and 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning, fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. So the first thing that um, we have to attack um, 
is the true and the real enemy. Because I think we have the enemies confused. And we're, and, and we're looking at the enemy um, like it's a booger bear devil or something that um, is going to jump out of a closet and, and scare the living bejeebus out of you. But he's even more horrifying than that. Because the Bible said that this enemy comes. And, and hear me, I'm not trying to be religious. I'm trying to be spiritual. And there is a major difference. I'm not trying to teach anybody on this page religion. If you, if, if you think that I am, you're sadly mistaken. Because religion uh, sets you up in a repetitive state. It sets you up in a uh, repetitive behavior. And it, it puts you in a cycle. A cycle. And it's because of this cycle that gives you false contentment. And to make you think that you are succeeding at something that you're absolutely failing at. To be spiritual minded is life. To be spiritual minded. And spiritual meaning I'm led by the spirit. I'm led by the spirit. So when you say I am led by the spirit, I am led by what spirit, Dr. Barnum? I am led by the spirit that I have been given. So what spirit is that? It's the spirit of power and of calm and of a balanced and sound mind. Did I just say something right there? Did I just say something? So anybody that is on this page that is operating in a spirit that is contrary to what I just stated, that the word of God said, then you are absolutely, sadly, being misled. Because you're supposed to be operating in a spirit of power. You're supposed to be operating in a spirit of power, in a spirit of calm. So then we have to then attack what is trying to attack my spirit of calm. What is trying to attack my spirit of calm? What is trying to attack my spirit of balance? The devil. That's obvious. But what devil? He's the enemy. What enemy is this? The enemy. The enemy. Me. Me. The unsurrendered part of me. The lack of knowledge part of me. That's the part that is being attacked by the enemy. That's the part that's being attacked by the enemy. No if, buts, and ands about it. My life is off balance. I'm not calm. I'm, 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 I'm frustrated. I'm going through changes. And I think that it is a devil that is in a spirit realm. But how many know that the enemy has to get in something in order for him to be made manifest? I just said something right there. It's the same law of the spirit. I want you to understand the laws of the spirit. It's the same law of the spirit. It's the law of the spirit that declares that if God is going to use us, if this power is going to use us, it has to get inside of something. It has to get inside of a person. So now, here we have a conflict. Remember when Paul said, when I would to do good, evil was always present. When I would to do good, evil was always present. Remember that scripture? You're going to find out that there's some very familiar scriptures that you're going to hear that makes a whole lot another kind of sense. When I would to do good, evil was always present. And then he said this, there's a war going on in my members. I feel a battle going on within me. Are you hearing me? One trying to subdue the other. Mm -hmm. And so if God is saying, I'm giving you the spirit of peace, and I'm giving you the spirit of calm, and I'm giving you a spirit of power, then why is my inner man in warfare? Why am I feeling all of that? Okay, then here we go. I'm going to tell you why. It says here that God has revealed to us that this enemy that we are talking about, it comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's what the enemy comes to do. He comes to kill, he comes to steal, he comes to destroy. And so 
This enemy that we are attacking now, it's killing us. It is stealing from us. It is destroying destinies. I think we done found the right enemy. I think we found the right enemy. So then I put this diagram up. Enter that. Come put it down, so. I put this diagram up. And this is what it says. And I want you to follow it if you if you can. Turn it down. Look, look, turn the face down so I can feel it. Yes. It says here, turn it around, so. It says here. How does this enemy enter in? How does this enemy enter in? The enemy enters in through our gates. The eye gate, the ear gate, the mouth gate, the smell gate, and the touch gate. See, that's what I'm talking about. Some of us do all right till we smell chicken. Yeah, till we smell chicken. We can just be looked at a video or all of what happens to chickens and how they killed and, and, and what they eat and all of that. And we can smell some fried chicken because the enemy is after that gate. He already know that in your eye gate, you've refused it. In your ear gate, I've heard what Dr. Barnum and others have said about why my body is being attacked. I heard that, I've shut it down. I saw that, I shut it down. I won't put it in my mouth. So the devil says, all of that's gone. I don't touch the chicken. I don't touch the steak. So my touch gate is closed to the enemy. My ear gate is closed to the enemy. My eye gate is closed to the enemy. My, oh come on. My mouth gate is closed to the enemy. But my smell gate is still open. Is that good, y'all? Am I saying something? Because the devil will get you by the smell. That's right. That's right. So then we have to protect and we have to guard and navigate the engagement of the enemy. We have to, we have to understand in our minds the engagement part. How he enters. And what is it that he really wants? What is it that he wants? He's not just after you. He's after your children. Have, have you ever went to the doctor? And I know everybody on this page has, if you've ever been to the doctor. And they give you this long form. You come in the doctor's office, you got a chest cold. They give you this long form and make you fill out this form. They're asking you everything about your mother, about your father, about your grandmother. Have they ever had diabetes? Have they ever had uh, a, a high blood pressure? Have they ever had cancer? Anybody in your family ever died of heart attack? Do you know why they ask you that? They ask you all of those questions to keep them from wondering what is wrong with you. They ask you those questions because you have inherited everything that your parents had. So they automatically go in. The human body is so, is so perplexed and it's so complex that they only have 15, 20 minutes to spend with you in a doctor's office. So it keeps them from having to go through all of these avenues to try to figure out what's wrong with you. They just go right to the symptoms of your mother, your father, your grandmother. And not in a half chance out of 10, they're going to nail it down to one of those diseases. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Oh my God. They're not going to tell you that I got the flu or I got the cold because of the fluenza that comes from the chickens that we've been eating. They're not gonna tell you that mucus is in your body. They're not gonna show you how to get it out of your body because there's only one disease in the whole world and that is mucus. Every sickness and disease is built from that one thing, mucus, and everything we eat got mucus in it, got snot in it. I just have to keep it 100, I'm sorry. So you wondered how you got heart congestion. You wonder how you got heart attack because everything is birthed from mucus. And so now you got to reverse the process. That's why I said it's reversible. I don't care what anybody tell you. It's reversible. You can eat your way back to life. Just like you ate your way to death, you can eat your way back to life. I'm saying something today for real. For real. So here we are. Here we are with understanding. Now, Thank you, Lord. I got to read you something. Genesis 1. Go to Genesis 1, 29. 
Genesis 1, 29. And here it is, Genesis 1, 29, and said, And God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the land, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. Are you are you are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? I wanna I wanna break something down here. Now this is this is going to be interesting because I have to go back and do it like this. Go to Genesis 1, Genesis 2. Go to Genesis 2 and 5. Antoinette, you can turn it around. It says, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth. So some of you have heard me say this, and for those of you, for the sake of those of you who have not, we're talking about Genesis 1 talks about the entire creation. Genesis 2 gives the chronological order of this creation. And this is going to make a lot of sense to you today. I promise you it is. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Because if you don't know the origin of a thing, the abuse is the inevitable. Yeah. If you don't know where you come from, then abusing it is the inevitable. You have no clue. So when you learn today the wealth of where you came from and how intentional how intentional God was when he made you. You're going to have another different appreciation for life. And you're going to stop letting all of them dead animals kill what God intentionally put together in such a pristine way. Good Lord have mercy, y'all. I just felt that. It said here, when, fifth verse, second chapter, fifth verse, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not yet caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was no man to till the ground. Man wasn't born yet. No plants, nothing. But there went up a mist, a fog vapor from the land and watered the whole surface of the ground. Moisture. Moisture came into the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life. And man became a living being. So out of the dirt of the ground, let me show you something. Bring me those papers back, Corey. Out of the dirt of the ground, Antoinette, pass me those papers right there. Got to show you something right here. I wasn't going to show you this until tomorrow, but I got to show, show you this now. Out of the dirt of the ground. I want you to see something here. God created man. And when he created man. Dirt within itself. And every living thing. Contains this molecule. This substance. This ad adhesion substance called laminate. 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 Laminate is what holds the whole body together. Laminin is what keeps your eyeballs in your sockets and your nose and your skin and your nails, everything glued together. It's, can you imagine that our skin is just suspended like that? It just, it knows to stay on top of uh, your muscles and it, the fat knows how much to be laid in there. Your, your ribs are just sitting in there. Everything is jointly put together. Um, there are no screws in your, in your uh, uh, skeletal uh, uh, formation unless you've had some kind of surgery. Isn't it something how everything just know how to just stay in place where God put it? Your, your, your kidneys, your, your, your ribs, your liver, uh, your lungs, all, all of the things that God put in place. And I think that's the thing that was so marvelous to me that when all of those fibroids came in my body, they moved all of my organs out of the way. They, 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 they pushed my organs in places that they were not supposed to be. And then they wrap themselves around my organs. So Dr. Johnny Johnson and the Holy Ghost had to go in there and cut all the fibroids away from my organs and then re-put my organs back in place. If they had pushed my intestines up in my chest, they had to pull my intestines back down, reposition my organs 
so I had stitches inside as well as outside. They, it had ripped my stomach muscles to pieces. They had to put my stomach muscles back together. That, yeah, that's what I did to myself. So I don't, this, before anybody take the devil is a lie. Yes, that's what I did to myself. That's what I permitted him to come into my gates and do to me. Yes. I just said something right there. Yes. I let him in. I invited him in with my fork and my knife. I invited him in from all of my family traditions. Eating whole head cheese, pork chops, barbecue ribs. Y'all not going to say amen on this page today. Fried chicken. All of that stuff. Equals. Getting up in the morning eating bacon and eggs and grits and pancakes. When between the hours of 4 and 12, the body is eliminated. You're not supposed to put anything in your body that is solid between 4 a.m. and 12 noon. A smoothie at the most. A bowl of fruit at the most. But not bacon and eggs and and chicken fried steak and grits with pus in it and more pus called butter and pus called cheese. Woo! Y'all, did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? And if you're from down south, smothered fried chicken in the morning with grits and more snot gravy. Okay. I think you just got the point. I think you just got the point. And the body is eliminating. The body is getting rid of all of those toxins that's in it. And you just said to the body, hold up. Don't get rid of no toxins. I, matter of fact, before you can get rid of the toxins that I ate yesterday, let me give you some more toxins. Let me give you some more poison. And let me eat the poison and go in the morning prayer. And let me eat some more poison and go to night service. Oh and then let me eat some more poison and go to Sunday morning service. Now, let me dance you all around the church for about an hour. Because you already got a bad heart. Your arteries are clogged. You got pus in you. You got snot in you. You've been eating chicken poop. And now you want to be in the prayer line talking about pray for my health. We sound like some crazy people. That's what we sound like. That's why people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And you are not going to be destroyed anymore. You're going to live to raise your children. You're going to live to finish your destiny. You're going to live to finish every plan that God has given you. You have been wonderfully and beautifully made. You alive, a living creature. God brought so much of you that he breathed himself into you and then gave you power over the whole earth. Jesus, teach But when you eat that animal and you put it in your insides, the most powerful part of a man, y'all, is his insides. People can say, well, somebody, oh, she's a pretty girl, but ugly in the inside. Yes. It's your insides that makes you beautiful. It's your insides yes. that makes you pure. Yes. And so now we're tainting the only part of us that is the real, the real exemplification of the Spirit of God. And how is that shown? Through the beauty of our skin, through the beauty of the mobility of our body, our ability to do the work of the kingdom. I have ability to finish my course with joy, not with a heart attack, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes, and, and, and osteoporosis. That's not the abundant life. That's not the abundant life. Oh God, I thank you, Jesus. Oh God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. So he says here, I made your body with laminin in it. And for the sake of those who don't know, this is what laminin looks like. Laminin in your body, it looks like the cross. So here we go now. Jesus <laughs> was crucified.
crucified before the foundation of the world was laid. Somebody said, well, there was no flesh uh, before creation. Who told you that? God is all things. You don't know that. But for the sake of argument, if you say there was no flesh back then, everything that was in the mind of God was already in existence. Now somebody need to say something like this. Everything that was in the mind of God. So if it was in the mind of God that Jesus be offered, that the Lamb be offered as uh, uh, our Savior, and He be crucified before the foundation of the world was laid, and that the Lord made us in that image, in His image, this thing is making so much sense to me, y'all. Just forgive me if I'm like way over the top about it. But I'm excited about just knowing that I have an opportunity to turn my life around. And really, really, I don't know about what Oprah talking about, but I'm talking about really living my best life for real. I'm talking about living it for real. I'm not talking about living it because I got a bank account. Because that's not the real wealth. The real wealth is health. The real wealth is health. And so here I am, now understanding that when he scooped up the dust, people, from the earth, it had the works of the cross in it. He created you with the works of the cross in it. So all of the repetition of the human race goes back to the original way that it was made, which means that man's makeup was plant-based. Oh, God. Man's makeup was plant-based. And then he breathed the breath of life into you. And then he said, now, I want you to eat the vegetation of the earth because this is your food. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you the abundant life because I breathe life into you. Now, I want you to continue with abundant life. I want this body to live, oh God. Why do you think the Bible said man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God? Do you understand that? In other words, this, if you're going to stay alive, you have to stay alive with the word of God. You have to stay alive with everything his word said to do. Because anything contrary to that, you're the walking dead. Is anybody being helped today? Is anybody being helped today? So then the scripture tells us in the book of Psalm. Go to Psalm. Go to Psalms 1. What I'm giving you is fact. I'm not giving you my opinion. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly following their advice. Blessed and prosperous is the man that do not walk in the counsel of anybody that tell you that pork is good for you. Blessed is the man. I'm going to look on off because I ain't even looking at the camera because I don't want y'all to think I'm, I'm. Blessed is the man that is happy and prosperous and should be envied. Tell my people, people jealous of you. They ain't jealous of you. Ain't nobody studying you. You're not enviable. You're not enviable. You got high blood pressure. You can't hardly walk. You're not enviable. I'm not hearing y'all. Blessed is the man and prosperous is his ways. And an enviable person that do not let the song love that chicken from where? Nowhere. I'm not here. That don't let the pizza commercial say, aren't you hungry? Aren't you? No, I'm not. Not for garbage. I don't care if you make an Arby's sandwich so tall that it's stand on top of my head. No. No, because I'm not going to prosper. Because I'm not going to have the energy to prosper. Because when I eat that stuff, all of a sudden I'm going to feel like somebody just dropped a brick on me. When you get through eating, you're supposed to be energized, people, not sluggish. Yes. A few minutes after you get through eating, you're supposed to feel like a shot of energy just yes. went through you. Exactly. Not I want to go to sleep. Do you not know you just dived your blood sugar to the ground? Do you not know you just shot your blood pressure up? 
Oh, okay. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on, stay with me, y'all. Stay with me. Watch this. Watch this. The following their advice, their plans and purposes. Them people that's trying to kill us, they got a plan and a purpose. They got a plan and a purpose. You want me to tell you what it is? Here's the plan. Here's the purpose. To cause your mama to buy 3,000 chickens a year so they can get her wealth. She gonna feed that to you and get you addicted. And then you gonna grow up begging for chicken at a young age so your mama eating chicken and you eating chicken and you begging for chicken. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me over here. Then you, then you are addicted as a child. And then you grow up telling your cousins how good your mama's chicken is. Now your cousins coming over and they want chicken. Then they mama buying chicken. I'm not hearing y'all. So when your mama die of a heart condition from fried chicken, the industry, they don't care that your mama die. Because they got two more generations of y'all hooked on chicken. I'm not hearing y'all. I just wish somebody would just say, Dr. Vine, if you are teaching this thing today. The purpose is the addiction. The purpose is I shoot this stuff with hormones so I can get you addicted like a crackhead. So I can make you shake. So I can make you feel like you're not sufficient if you haven't had it. That is the biggest lie in the world. The body does not need meat protein to be strong. That's a lie in your brain that the devil tell you, well, I ate some vegetables. When I don't have no meat, I just feel weak. No, when you don't have meat, you feel the crave of your addiction. Your body starts falling apart. The weakness is not because you feel weak. The weakness is because you're getting a reaction from the addiction. Father, let me help somebody today, Jesus. Let me help them. Father, let me help somebody today. Let me help them, God. Just let me help anybody, Lord, today. Just let me help somebody today. No, I feel this thing so passionately. I feel it. I feel it in my heart of heart. No, no, no. It is the addiction. So you got, you got cows eating grass. You got cows eating grass. Mm -hmm. Is anybody over there listening? You are eating what they don't eat. You got cows eating grass and you eat the cow because you want protein from the cow. But the cows and the elephants and the gorillas and the giraffes are the strongest animals in the kingdom and all they eat is plant life. So you getting secondhand protein plus a heart attack. Good luck with that one. You getting you you getting you getting high blood pressure because what you're doing is you're taking that meat and sucking the protein out of it. And yes, the protein is going in while the meat is killing you. Put it down. giving you vegetation for your food. Oh God. The body only needs approximately using approximately 50 grams of protein for the natural everyday life. You get more than that in vegetables that you eat. Who told you that? The drug addicts? Who told you that? The dope pushers? Do y'all know that's what that... In my mind, that's how I see that people on this page. I see when you go to grocery stores in the meat department, it's like a drug dealer standing there with some glasses on and some big old gold chains saying, what's up? Where's my money? Where's my money? And then you got people that have the audacity to say, it's expensive to live like a vegan. Okay, let's count this up. Let's just count this up. Let's count
jump this up. If I went to the store and I bought some greens and I bought some corn cob and I bought some, some stuff for a salad mm -hmm. and then my daddy won't steak and June June won't pork chops and, 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 and Carol won't eat steak or pork chops, she like chicken. So I done bought three groups of meat to go with the vegetables. You get to the counter, that's about a hundred and some dollars. Take the meat off. Take the meat off. And then look at the bill. No, dying is what's expensive. Oh God. How dare you put a price on your life? No, dying is expensive. Oh, this is such a trick of the devil. Because y'all listen to this. Not only are you eating the meat, not only are you satisfying the pockets of people that are selling you stuff that hurt you, but now you are raising the pockets even more of the people that's got to treat you because they cannot heal you from it. Right. No doctor can heal you from a disease. Yes. They can only treat it. That's why they call it practicing medicine. So you're going to spend your whole life with somebody practicing on your life, practicing on your arm, practicing on your legs, practicing on your high blood pressure, practicing on your brain, practicing on your heart? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not in you and your right mind. Not, I don't think so. So the money that I could be using to build a business, I'm giving to the doctor. The money that I could be using to start a whole nother bank account, I'm over here giving this to me. And both of them is killing me. One of them is feeding it to me, and the other one is treating me until I die. And God gets the glory out of none of it. I'm talking to spiritual people now, not religious people. I want to see some heart, what I just said, because I'm, I'm telling y'all. One of my spiritual daughters in Guyana called, emailed me this morning and said, I just went home and said, I'm just going to get me some jerk chicken and some rice. And she said, and I ate the vegetables and ate the rice and put the chicken in my mouth and spit it out. She said, I could hear your voice saying, spit that out. One of my little sisters over here was telling me the other day, oh yeah, I cook for my uncle and, and I don't eat the meat, but I cook for I said, oh, so you're just sitting there just killing your uncle. You're just, 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 just killing it. Just, well, I don't eat it, but I, I cook it for him. It's like, here, uncle, welcome to a quick death. Follow their advice, their plans and purposes, nor stands submissive. I won't submit to that and inactive in the path where sinners walk. Do y'all see that? Inactive. In other words, what he's declaring is, if we follow the plans of the enemy, we will become inactive in the path where they walk. Sinners will be prospering, but the believer will become inactive. In other words, we don't exist. We're not doing anything that's substantial enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in the world. We're just dumb Christians. We're just the people that just shout and just like they said, believe in this, in this, this fictitious God, but not anymore. Because now he has opened up our eyes to the trick of this world and the trick of the devil. Yeah. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because I don't know about y'all, but when I put it down, it's like your brain wakes up. That sluggishness leave, the fog leave, the drugs come out of your body and you got to give yourself time for the body to detox. Let me tell you, I'm sick. I got that. No, the body is saying to you, thank you. Every time you feel that, the body is saying thank you. When you get those sweats and you start shaking, the body is saying, I appreciate you. Thank you for getting this stuff out of me because I was not made to digest me. Yes, yes, I'm going to turn the corner right quick for somebody that said, well, wait a minute now because back in the Bible days, God, he gave the people. Well then, why did he let it rain down quail then? Because they beg for it. And I'm going to say this, they beg for it. And this is <laughs> the it for today. They beg for it. And why did they beg for it? Why did they beg for it? They begged for it because the Bible said a mixed multitude went out among them. 
They beg for it for the remembrance of association. You got to be careful about people. Listen, I, I don't care. I, it's like going to be minimum. You, you a real strong meat eater. I, I got to minimize my relationships with you because first of all, if I love you and you my friend and, and, and we real close, I'm going to end up taking care of you. You're going to end up asking me some money for your high blood pressure medicine and all of that. So I'm getting ready to be an enabler to you. That's what I'm getting ready to be. Because you ain't going to be well enough to work. And then you're going to ask me for money for your light bill. Do I have a witness over here? Yes. You're going to be asking me for money for your phone bill because you're going to be short because you done missed day. This is a journey. If you got to look at it like that. No, I'm getting ready to go down a journey with you. And then we're going to bury you and your mom and mama ain't going to have enough money for your funeral. And I'm going to have to help bury you. No, I'm not doing all that. Y'all ain't saying that. Yes, teach. teach. That's too much of a burden for me to be your friend. Yes, yes. You put in the responsibility of your life on me. It's not just a friendship now. Mm -hmm. We're not growing together. We're not blossoming together. We're not going to the mall together. We're not enjoying ourselves. We're not building businesses together. I'm building something and I got to always take care of you. Right. I'm, I'm saying something right. here. And right. somebody need to say something right. up here. Well, then what did God give them? I'm going to tell you. He gave them manna. He gave them manna. And manna was coriander seed. C-O-R-I-A-N-D-E-R. -E coriander seed. Listen what he rained down for them. Coriander seeds benefits. The benefits of manna. Beneficial for diabetes. Promotes healthy bones. Prevent nausea, vomiting, and stomach disorders. Treat salmonella based on illnesses and smallpox. It prevents muscular degeneration, reduces skin inflammation and clear skin disorders like eczema. It regulates menstrual cycles. It gives relief from anemia. It reduces uh, seasonal allergies and hay fever. It reduces cholesterol levels and high blood pressure. It eliminates bad breath and heals ulcers. It has a ratio of vitamin K, 388%, vitamin A, 135%, vitamin C, 45%. The nutrients is dietary fiber, 11%, calories, 1%, protein, 4%. Oh, wait, hold on a minute. Minerals, magnesium, 21%, potassium, 15%, copper, 11%. But well, let's go back to that protein. God rained down manna from heaven and only put 4% of protein in what he rang down for them to eat. Because it's not the level of protein, it's the level of alkaline. Right. It's the level of alkaline that keeps the body replenished. Yeah, alkaline. Like you should get up in the morning and, and, and not eat anything until you have at least digested at least a liter of alkaline, body, of, of, of alkaline water. At least 7.9 going up there. 9.5. Because no disease or sickness can live in alkaline body. It, it'll start bringing your blood pressure down. Oh it'll literally hydrate your organs. I'm talking to somebody today that just want to live. I'm talking to somebody that just want to live. I'm not talking to dummies. I'm talking to people that understand that life is valuable. and It's, it's a gift, people. It's a gift. And we're not going to be the Christians anymore that just sit in the prayer line. And we call our sicknesses more than we call our accomplishments. Yes. You don't hear a lot of Christians saying, my business, my wealth, my house, yes. my organization, yes. my school that I started, yes. it's my high blood pressure, my heart condition, I'm not hearing y'all. Girl, give me this because my sugar level. Give me this right here because my swollen legs. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Ain't nobody saying nothing. My. We walk around claiming what is wrong with us. But I'm asking you to stop today. Give that back to the devil. We can give it back to him for real this time. Oh God, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. We can give it back to him, him up for real this time. It doesn't have to be whimsical. Well, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Well, where's the devil? Well, he right here or is he over here? Or, or I think, and devil, wherever you are, rebuke. No, 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 I know where you are. Yeah. And I'm putting you out of my house. Yeah. I'm putting you out of my cabinet. Yeah. I'm throwing you out of my freezer. Yeah. I'm throwing you out of my refrigerator. Yeah. You're not going to get in my grocery cart and you're not going to enter none of my gates because I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Who am I talking to?
came to. I'm sick and tired of the people being sick and tired. My God, my God, I feel this. My God, I feel this. I'm sick and tired of burying people before their time. I'm sick and tired of 30 year old men dropping dead or heart attacks in the gym. Mm. I'm tired of seeing young women die from ovarian cancer. And mothers that's not even 65 years old having knee replacements and hip replacements from eating dairy. I'm sick and tired of the people of God representing what is sick and tired. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just need a minute. Sorry about that. My father didn't have to die. Your parents could be still alive. Your sisters and your brothers, your children don't have to have asthma and all of these sicknesses on kids. The St. Jude Hospital don't have to be filled with little kids. Floor after floor after floor of cancer. Because they inherited it. They inherited that gene that was filled with pork chops and beef. And contaminated chicken. Contaminated. God help us. Contaminated. You talking about prayer? That's what prayer is. God help us. That's what it is. Your people need you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful Jesus. I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, God. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm just ready. I'm just ready. <sighs> you look on television and you see all these secular artists and people just reaching their goals. And you ask yourself, well, I wonder why. And then you find out they're vegan. You see people that are, that are creative geniuses and then you find out they vegan. Right. And they always on television talking about, oh, this one just created this yeah. and it became a multi-billion dollar this. But hardly ever a Christian. And I'm tired of it. Hardly ever a believer. Because we eating ourselves to the grave. And those of us that are not in the grave, we're the walking dead. And the devil is a liar. And I rebuke him today because I know who the real enemy is. I cast him down from his place. I dry him up in your blood system. I cast out every craving spirit of the defiled thing today. I break that addiction. I break that addiction. And I call you up out of the gutter. And I call you to your rightful place in God. 
And I give you this day your true inheritance. I give you today what belongs to you and no other. For I decree it and I declare it this day. That you will finish your course with joy. Amen. I'm posting today a page, a new page. On my Facebook page, I'm posting a new page. And the page is um, the VIP, the VIP page, vegan inspired people. And the Lord has instructed me come January 1 to challenge as many people as I can to go to that website and to sign up that for one year I'm going with you Dr. Bynum for one year I'm going to clean my system and I'm going to go vegan for one year I want to commit to it he told me to sign up as many people as I can you're going to be getting weekly emails I'm going to be doing special webinars on YouTube that only you would know about We got to get your life back. We got to get your life back. You need to join today. It's free. Don't cost you nothing. But we're doing this for one year. 365 it says become a VIP at 365 with me. You're not going to stop until you get your destiny back.